Hello and welcome back. My name is Chris, and today we are going to make an application lang chain that lets us query a Canadian bill, that being like a legal bill, and uh, ask it questions. So we'll do a quick demo here. We can browse files, upload a bill, open it up, and then we can ask some questions of it. All right, so we ask the bill a question, which is provide a short summary of this bill, and we get the answer. So how did we do this? Well, first things first, this is powered by Anthropics Claude. The reason we're using Claude is because these bills can be rather long. So if we just, you know, scroll through all the text here, you're gonna see that's a lot of bill, okay? So first things first, we're wanting to take advantage of that big context window. Is this bill long enough that it's going to really take up to 100,000 tokens? No, definitely not. But we just want to be sure we have enough context window. So we're using Claude today. Um, also, Claude's dope. So how do we actually power the thing? Well, you'll be unsurprised to learn that we're using Langchain. So let's take a look at the actual code. You'll see that this is available on GitHub. So if you want to you know, create your own uh, version of this, feel free. While this is a Canadian bill explainer, technically you could upload any PDF. It doesn't have to be Canadian bills, uh, but we, you know, that's just what I'm focusing on because, you know, as you can see, these bills are rather information dense. There's quite a lot of uh, stuff going on, you know, and so it it's just uh, easiest if we condense them into a more palatable format and ask questions about what's being applied and, and why. So back over to our code base. The first thing you'll notice is that we have the files you might expect. We have our app, we have our license, we have some requirements, we have some things to ignore, and we have our .env. Now I provided the env as a env sample. If you want to use this yourself and run it locally, you'll want to rename this to .env and then add your Anthropic API key. We'll get into how you might use this with Hugging Face in a moment, but for now, that's how you do it locally. Inner app.py is where all the magic happens. We are, of course, leveraging Langchain. Langchain is just an incredible tool. There's nothing more to say about it. I hope to be producing a lot of videos on Langchain in the coming weeks. Uh, it is an incredible tool. And it's just fun to use, and it really it, it makes creating large language model applications so straightforward and fun. Uh, I really recommend taking the time to play around with it. But the way we're going to use it today is to create a very simple chain. And that chain will just be, hey, take this prompt and send it to this LLM, right? And then let's collect the response. So let's look at how we do that. First things first, I'm setting up the chain in this little class here. This is like completely unnecessary, uh, but I did it just so it was easier for me to manage streamlet state, and that's it. You'll notice that the first thing we do is get this system prompt. I created a helper function just because I didn't want this big block of text in my init, but all this is doing is it's using this particular class from Langchain called System Message Prompt Template. If you recall from OpenAI and other language models, right? There's kind of like that instruction layer, and then there's like the assistant layer, and then there's the user layer to all the interactions, right? This is the case in Langchain as well when you're using these prompt templates. So the System Message Prompt Template is like hey, this is your instruction, right? This is, I want you to follow these instructions. The assistant, or in this case uh, from Langchain, it's called AI message type template, you know, a, say a sample response. So if you wanted to do say like a few shot example, we would use the AI message prompt template to achieve that. And then the human message prompt template is like the user. So let's look at an example of what I'm talking about to make it a little bit easier to follow. So even though we're not using OpenAI, their documentation is just super straightforward. As you can see, we have these messages and in each message, we have this idea of a role and then content. 
Content is the actual like text that you want to provide. And then role is kind of saying, you know, hey, this is the system role, right? So this is like your instructions. This talks about, this, this is where we set up the guidelines for how we want our LLM to respond. You know, we tell it what it is, what it can do. Then we have our user. This emulates the user's input. We have our assistant. Now in Langchain, user is human and assistant is AI, but they mean the same thing, right? This is basically providing an example of a question and how we want the model to answer the question so that when we ask it additional questions, it provides us a response the same kind of way that we've outlined above. And so that's all we're doing here. So the system prompt that we've generated today is essentially just saying, you're a Canadian legal expert, but you cannot give legal advice. Again, that's against the TOS. We don't want this thing to provide any legal advice to anyone. We just want it to explain what's happening in the bill in layman's terms. And so we tell it, you're adept at explaining the law in layman's terms. You're able to provide context to legal questions. We also give it this added uh, you know, piece of text, which basically says, Please don't pull in context that's irrelevant to the actual bill in question. We let it speak a language. In this case, we limit its options to English and French. That's because the bills are provided to us in both English and French uh, because Canada has two official languages. Then we just slap in our legal context. So that's going to be our bill. And then we return that as our system message prompt template. This template thing is what allows us to use things like context or language here. So we have the ability to, when we're running the chain, modify these values to be what we desire. We return that and we save it in our system prompt. Then we generate a user prompt. Again, we're gonna use this prompt template class, this time though for human messages. And the template is just this legal question. So that all that means is we can insert the user's query into the chain so we can get an answer to it. We need to collate those into a chat prompt template. And we do so from messages since we set up these message templates above. We just need to provide those in a list and that becomes our full prompt template. We also have our language model, which in this case is chat anthropic. We'll be talking about Langchain in more detail in the coming weeks. So I'm not going to go too into the weeds here today, but the idea is that this is our LLM, right? It's the anthropic model and it's set up for chat. Uh, this means Claude, since anthropic just has one model. They have two versions of Claude, but it's all Claude all the way down. And then we set up our chain and our chain is just our LLM and then our prompt, which again is this set of prompts that we've built from above. And that's all a chain is, right? We're just saying, hey, Langchain, take this text that we inject something into and then pass that to the LLM and then give us the response, please and thanks. Chains can obviously be a lot more complex than this, but to begin, we're just going with a very simple uh, very straightforward example. Now that we have that all set up, all we need to do is have a method that lets us run that chain. And this is exactly what the run chain method does. We just have chain.run and then we provide all of the extras that we need. So in this case, our language, our context and our actual question. And again, this comes from language, context and legal question. We also have this helper function that just converts PDF into text. We just have that so we can turn our PDF into a big old chunk of text that we can send along to the model. Uh, we create a simple Streamlit app. I'm not gonna go into any detail on this. We use state to handle a few things. This is like basically a, uh, something that was whipped up in five minutes. It is beyond simple. This is not a production ready application. It's just meant to showcase how quickly you can get these things into a state that you can start using them. So now that we've talked about all that, let's again, see how it works in action. We're gonna first talk about how I got this on Hugging Face. So if we go to our VS code, 
you'll notice that in git remote dash v, which shows us all of the remotes that I have in this repository, I've added the hugging face space repository address as a remote, and I just pushed this to it. That's it. Uh, it's really, I, I need to kind of express how straightforward a lot of these processes are, right? I think the idea is a lot of people feel overwhelmed because this tech is very new or very powerful. And so they assume it must be very difficult to get something going. It's the opposite. The ecosystem of tools we have right now are so powerful that it's, it's very straightforward to get this done. So all we do is we build this app, right? We provide a requirements and re realistically, that's all we would need to do. We push that to our hugging face space that's been set up as Streamlit. And I'll show you how that process looks in just a second. You'll see here that in the repository on the space, it's just our app. It's exactly what's in GitHub, right? Like we didn't change anything. Now you might think to yourself, well, hang on a second, Chris, you know, this env doesn't actually have our API key. How are you able to run Claude, you know, in this app? And that's because of secrets. So we go to settings, we scroll down to repository secrets, and you can see that I've included the Anthropic API key here. To do this is very straightforward. You just click on new secret, you add whatever you want, and you add new value, you know, whatever the value of your uh, secret is, and you add it. And now that's accessible as an environment variable inside whatever space you're using. So let's see how we actually made the space just so you guys can understand a little bit clearer. We just use the link above to navigate to spaces. We click on create new space. We're gonna create a new space name. I'm gonna call this Canadian Bill Explainer V1. You can call it whatever you'd like. Select a license. We're just gonna use open rail since this is, you know, this code is not for realsies. We go to streamlit and then we go to create space. Again, I'm just electing to have this private so that uh, you know, people aren't racking up my, my Claude API bill. We click on create space and it gives us this address. So let's just copy that address and head over to our terminal. In our terminal, we're going to use git remote add. We're going to call this hugging face, you know, V1 say, and then include that address. Okay. So once you have your hugging face space set up and you've added it as a remote. All you have to do is use the command git fetch dash dash all to fetch all of the changes on all of your remotes. Then you're going to use this rather big command git merge dash s recursive dash x there's hugging face v1 main allow unrelated histories. This is a doozy of a command, and I wouldn't recommend you using it in really any situation outside of this one, but what this is doing is it's going to recursively merge this branch, which is our space, into our main branch. We have to allow this unrelated histories because they're not related histories. They've never seen each other. This is the first time they're meeting, so we have to tell them that's okay. And we want to keep theirs because we want to be able to uh, keep the default readme settings. Now, once you've done that, you are free to change any of these things as you'd like. So say, you know, for instance, you wanted to change this emoji to a different emoji, change it to a little paper here, and you want to change this color and this color, you know, we could do that. We can save it. And then we can use the command git commit dash am to update then we can use the command git push hugging face v1 main to push that readme change all the way up we go to our readme here and we can see all those changes have propagated and that makes us very happy now let's go to our app because we've created a new space we have to add our secret so again we're going to go new secret we're going to go anthropic api key and then we're going to add our Anthropic API key. Once I added that, I just hit add new secret and here it is. Now we go back to our app. We see that it's running again. We don't get any new errors. We can browse our files. We can select our bill. We can open our bill and then we can ask questions of it. Like, does this bill include any reference to video conferencing. We can run that question. 
You can see these kind of thinking dots here. And we can see that indeed it does contain some reference to video conferencing and remote proceedings. There you go. So hopefully that was a helpful walkthrough. Uh, again, we're going to be spending more time on Langchain on this channel. Just, you know, how to implement different systems with it. It is probably the best way to build with LLMs for most people currently. The reason I say that is because it really lets you do a lot regardless of your experience with actual language modeling. So it's really good at building applications. And I think a lot of people are really interested in building really cool applications. And that doesn't require a tremendous understanding of the actual LLMs themselves. I definitely encourage you to look into and, you know, get experience on and learn about large language models because they're so cool and knowing more is always better. But, you know, if you're looking to just get into creating value for your business, for your startup, for yourself, this is the easiest way to do it, right? It's like every time you have a situation like this, which is, I don't know what this bill says. I don't have time to read a thousand lines of legalese. I need it explained to me in English. You know, you could just whip that up in Langchain and away you go. So thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please click the like button and uh, we will see you in the next one. Thanks so much.